Hi, my name is Eric Carter. I'm a mountain athlete in Squamish, British Columbia. The purpose of this video is to kind of describe the layering system that I use for running in the mountains here in coastal BC. So before I talk about the actual clothing that I'm using or the equipment that I'm using, I think it's kind of important to talk about the different styles of running that we're doing. And so the first one being just general trail running. And to me, that's something that I'm doing generally in the valley bottom, you know, below tree line on nice buff trails, usually pretty reasonable access to infrastructure. So there's, you know, cell service, access to water and food, potential for rescue is pretty close by, and we really don't need much equipment. I'm just using my feet. There's no climbing or scrambling or anything like that. And then the second category being mountain running. And so that's where I'm going at or above tree line, uh, you know, potentially up into alpine terrain, but I'm generally on less technical, still more on trails. Um, and so here you might have a little bit less access to cell service, rescues probably further, you know, further afield and so not quite as easily reliable. And for those reasons, we need to have a little bit more equipment and a little bit more kind of contingency. And then the, the third category being what I call alpine running. And so this is really kind of that um, crossover of running, scrambling, and potentially even into alpine climbing. And so the technical level is much higher. The need for equipment is often a bit higher. And the access to all these kind of comforts, you know, we're above tree line, so we're exposed to weather. We have less likely uh, cell service or communications difficult access to rescue, and potentially we're carrying all the food or water that we need for the day, uh, as well as any equipment we need for the day. So based on those three categories is how I can uh, decide what I'm going to be carrying for the day. So from there, we'll head back into town and I'll show you those, those different options. Okay, so this is my basic trail running kind of base layering setup. I've got a Cormac short sleeve shirt from Arcteryx and the Modus running short from Arcteryx as well. And so this is kind of what I'd wear if I'm just in the valley doing general trail running, not really needing any protection, basically. Hot day, that kind of thing. Um, I really like the Modus shorts. They're a little bit longer than I would typically go for racing, but that's really nice for kind of adventure stuff where you're gonna be brushing up against trees and bushes and need a little bit more protection from the outer short. And then they have an inner uh, short liner, so you don't need to wear anything under them. <clears throat> they do have a few pockets, uh, and I'll use those occasionally. They're not massive pockets, so I typically tend to carry a running belt when I'm basically doing anything. <clears throat> the Cormac shirt is not super synthetic feeling and reasonably comfortable. Then when I need to layer up, so just a slight bit more warmth maybe in the spring or fall, uh, or even for winter running, uh, the next step for bottoms would be the Incendo pant. And so this is just a really lightweight, super thin fabric, uh, really small packable pair of pants and really easy to slip on. You do need to be able to have your shoes off to put them on. Uh, it doesn't have a gusset, but they are just nice, comfortable, pretty breezy running pants. So not a whole lot of protection. The next step up from the Incendo pants, if I want even more protection, say for proper winter running when there's snow blowing or anything like that, um, but I'm probably still using these just in the valley, would be the Trino SL pant. And so these have more of a windstopper uh, material to them. They're quite a bit heavier feeling uh, and just a lot more protective feeling. Again, they don't have a gusset, but they do sit a little longer. So the legs on these are, are quite a bit longer and, and more protective down at the cuff. Um, not quite as airy feeling, a little bit more stretch to them, but otherwise very comfortable winter running pants. Once I'm moving from trail running into more mountain or alpine running outside of the valley, up in the mountains, especially if I'm going to be slowing down. So for example, if I'm climbing or belaying or anything that might prevent me from kind of aerobically generating heat, then I'm going to bring a slightly more protective uh, shell pant, especially if I'm expecting to be in the snow at all. And so for me, the Sigma FL climbing pant is a really, really good shell pant. It's one that I can pull on over my running shorts and be very, very comfortable in most BC coastal alpine situations in the summer. It's got good belt system and is a nice burly pant to wear, lots of protection final step that I'll take if I'm expecting to be very cold and not moving much and something 
just a bit more insulative under either that Trino SL or the Sigma FL under my shell pant, I'll add the Northern Playground Zip Long Long Underwear. And so I can put, put these under my shell pant, zip them on, and then I have a nice added bit of ex, uh, insulation. Like I said, for my tops, I'll typically start in the Cormac short sleeve shirt, just because it is just a, a bit more comfortable of a feeling fabric. It doesn't feel super synthetic, but if it's really, really hot and humid in town, I will go to a singlet, um, and that's like a totally synthetic fabric, uh, but it's just like the most comfortable thing when you want that as much airflow as possible, basically. If I'm in the Alpine and I wanna step up the insulation, or there's really significant sun exposure, then I might bump up to the Remige hoodie. And so this is a very similar material to the t-shirt that I'm wearing. Uh, it's a long sleeve hoodie and it also has a hood. And so this really gives good sun protection. I'm not stressed about you know, burning my shoulders or my arms. And if we're on glaciers, on snow, up in the Alpine, it's a little bit chilly. It's a really comfortable piece to have and adds just that little extra bit of insulation, especially if then we throw a shell on top of it. In terms of insulation, once we're up in the mountains, it kind of is a bit of a trade-off to figure out what to bring because ideally you're moving smoothly throughout the mountains and not actually stopping and getting cold. You're generating heat as you go, but assuming you do stop at any point, whether it's for uh, a break or just more technical terrain or an actual emergency, then all of a sudden that production of body heat stops and you really have to think way more about insulation and shells. And so for upper insulation, I've been experimenting lately with a vest. And so this is the Cerium LT down vest. And it's actually a pretty thick vest when you put it on. It adds a ton of insulation, especially then when I throw a shell jacket over it. So the shell is keeping the the air in and the insulation is doing its job inside uh, but it packs up a lot smaller than a full down jacket does so if i'm expecting a little bit less of a need for insulation or i want to boost the insulation value of the jacket that i'm wearing then i'll add this insulated vest if i'm really expecting the need for some insulation a full insulated jacket i've got two options one is the cerium lt jacket and the other is the nuclei hoodie and so both of these are hooded insulated jackets both about the same size uh, the cerium lt is very similar to that cerium lt vest and so this gives you an idea of, of about how small it packs up for summertime valley bottom trail running my first choice for a shell when i just need like a pretty basic wind shell that's going to be the incendo hoodie and so this is just a really really lightweight hooded jacket it's just windstopper. You know, this isn't going to do anything against rain, but it does add a lot of warmth on a chilly morning. And one thing I really like is this little button that you can close that up. And so you keep the jacket open, so air flowing through, uh, but the jacket's not billowing open. So I, I really like that feature and wish it was on some more of the jackets. Otherwise, super simple, one little pocket that it can stuff itself into, and that adds a lot of warmth on just the chilly mornings. Then when I warm up, the sun comes out, I pack it up small, stick it in my running belt, and I'm good to keep going. If I do think I might be wearing a helmet and I need a wind jacket, then I'll grab a Squamish hoodie, which has a little bit bigger helmet compatible hood. When it's raining, a rainy trail run in the valley, you know, maybe a bit colder, and just generally wet. We get this a ton in the spring in Squamish. Um, then my go-to rain jacket for running is the Norvan SL. So this is the Gore-Tex Shake Dry fabric and it's a really, really lightweight, uh, very thin Gore-Tex membrane without the protective surface. So it is a somewhat delicate jacket. <clears throat> We're not supposed to use these with backpacks because the packs will abrade the jacket material, but it's incredibly warm and shockingly waterproof for how thin it is. Basically, uh, it's as waterproof as any other jacket. You're way more likely just to sweat on the inside than you are to actually get water in on the outside. The hood is big enough, uh, just about big enough to fit over a helmet, but it you know, cinches down quite nice. I can get really tucked into this hood and it's quite protective. 
I love the Norvan SL. I use it a ton. I pretty well beat them up and they, they actually survive surprisingly well. We can pack them up really small into the hood and that can go into a running belt or a vest as well. I'm gonna use this as my emergency shell when I'm in the Alpine, as long as I'm expecting good weather. So this would be my, my really like worst case, absolute emergency storm out of the middle of nowhere, totally unexpected kind of shell. Um, but it's not something I'm gonna rely on when I'm expecting bad weather. If I'm really going somewhere remote or I'm going in the Alpine and I see that there is some bad weather or precipitation in the forecast, then I'm gonna grab the Alpha SL uh, Anorak. And so this is a new Vectran jacket. It's not got a full zip, so that uh, adds like a little bit of complexity putting it on, but it really reduces the weight and the bulk. So the Alpha SL is helmet compatible. It's a full alpine climbing jacket. This is kind of the bomb proof storm shell that I'm gonna have on uh, or wanna have on if stuff really goes bad. And then with my insulating layers under it, I'm actually gonna stay pretty warm in this. Uh, even if I'm wet, you know, it's, it's, it's actually very, very comfortable and very protective. For just basic accessories, I'll have usually a buff which can be around my neck, over my face for sun protection, or used in place of a hat. Often I'll just bring a thin skull cap that I'll wear under a helmet. And then for trail running and any time that I just, I'm not worried about insulation, but keeping the sun in my eyes, this is the Ilaho ball cap that I'll wear. And then very, very light summer gloves. These are actually Gore Infinium, which is kind of a wind stopper glove. And so this is something that I can use in the snow you know, if I'm climbing and need to use an ice axe, I can pull these gloves on and still stay reasonably warm. So they're not just thin um, fleece, but they do actually have a little bit of wind stopper there. For packs or carrying capacity, if I'm just carrying my cell phone, maybe a bit of water, a bit of food, I've really moved towards the band style uh, of carrying things. And so this is, so this I'll wear under my shirt, really simple over the shorts. If I'm using this, I'm not gonna have anything in my pockets in my shorts, but I will use the four pockets of the band, typically cell phone in the front because I don't want to squish it if I lean against something, um, and then a jacket or some water or anything else that I need to carry. My keys can go in the zipper pocket on the side and I'm good to go. Really simple, easy to carry. I basically wear a band for every run, almost no matter how short it is, just because it's the easiest way to carry the phone. The running pack that I'm using at the moment is the Reach from Blue Ice. So we've got the eight, or this is the 12 liter version. And this is kind of a, a fairly typical running pack uh, in that it's got the vest style setup. <clears throat> Just two clips up front and some adjusters on the side. It's got pockets up front for water bottles or cell phones. These are actually full zip pockets. So if there's something in there that you wanna keep really secure, you can zip them all the way shut. It is a little bit climbing oriented. So it's got gear loops on the outside and it's got ice axe attachment on the back. It's really, really good if, you know, say I wanna carry just a pair of crampons and a little bit of extra clothing. This is a really great, great running vest for that. If I wanna go a step up in uh, vest or backpack capacity, I'll actually typically switch to a Schemo race vest. And so this is the Dinafit DNA race pack. And so it's 16 liters, it has a main compartment and then a crampon pouch, which is actually pretty easy access and really quite convenient for mountain running. So if I need a little bit more gear, a little bit of extra clothing, pair of crampons, an ice axe, maybe a helmet, this is often the pack that I'll grab. It's no longer the vest style, so it does have a waist belt, uh, which is actually kind of nice when you get into a higher capacity bag, but it does have the front pockets. These are stretchy pockets to fit a flask or a cell phone or anything else. Uh, I've got some chewies in here right now. I really do like this easy access crampon pocket on the side, especially if I'm gonna be transitioning between rock and snow, rock and snow really frequently. It can be way easier to kind of just go in and out of that rather than actually having to take off the backpack. And then if I'm in a situation where I've actually got a full rack of climbing gear or just any other additional amount of gear for a trip up in the mountains, then I'm most likely gonna be switching to an actual pack 
something like this Dragonfly 25 from Blue Ice. I really like this one because it's a super simple climbing rucksack. It doesn't have any shoulder strap, um, you know, vest features like for water or a cell phone, but it does have side pocket, uh, stretchy pockets that we can keep a water bottle in on the side here. So it's not quite as easy access, but it's got a lot more capacity and carries that gear a lot more uh, effectively. It's still po totally possible to run with this pack on, but most of the time when I'm carrying a full 25 liter pack worth of equipment, I'm often not gonna be actually doing that much running. So it's great for you know a short bit of jogging on the way out, but otherwise this is kind of getting more into climbing pack territory. Before I talk about shoes, I think the socks that you use within those shoes are really important. I really like the Enduro sock from Balega. It's a mix of synthetic and wool, and I think the wool really helps keep the sock uh, from slipping around inside the shoe and just are generally a bit more comfortable than a full synthetic sock. I consider the Norvan SL and the new SL2 to kind of be a bit of a vertical shoe. They're super light. They're great for running. They've got good uh, ground contact feeling. The sole is a Vibram sole, so they're excellent for scrambling, um, smearing on rocks, climbing on slabs, all that. The upper's really, really burly, despite being incredibly thin and incredibly breathable. <clears throat> and so it's just an overall very light and very comfortable running shoe. It's not quite as burly of a sole for pounding, especially downhill on rocks. And so it's not kind of my go-to long trail running shoe, but if I'm climbing on the Chief or running around on the Chief, it's a really good choice. The VT2 shoe is the mountain running shoe. It's essentially designed kind of like an approach shoe with a very climbable sole, but it's still got uh, quite a bit of midsole and is very comfortable for long, running longer distances. So instead of being kind of uncomfortable in an approach shoe, we've got a running shoe that climbs as well as an approach shoe. The LD2 is essentially my go-to general trail running shoe. It's got the most padding inside the mid midsole. It's still got the Vibram sole, but a, quite a bit bigger lug on the outsole. It's got a fairly durable upper, but it's still very breathable and actually drains water really well. What I've noticed with the LD2 is that when I get them completely soaked, you know, running through a stream or something like that, typically if I squeeze out my socks and get going again, these shoes feel like they dry out very, very quickly. The other thing I love about the LD2 and actually the VT2 is the lace garage. And so once you just tie a single knot in the laces, you can pull on this tab and stuff those laces up into that garage. And then they stay there the entire run. They don't come undone. So I no longer double knot my shoes. I just tuck them up in there and then I don't have to retighten or anything even after 10 plus hours of moving around in the mountains. So I really, really love that feature. Sweet, so thanks for watching. Hopefully this was super helpful and you get to have some awesome adventures in the mountains this year. And if you enjoyed it, definitely hit subscribe. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you soon.